Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and welcome to my final episode for the night. We're doing five episodes. It's almost 10 o'clock uh, p.m. my time, uh, Pacific Standard Time, and I am really tired and I have to be at work early tomorrow, so I'm going to try to edit all these and get them up as fast as I can. Uh, for this episode, though, we are going to talk about a comic book, Venom First Host number five, and yes, I got the variant. I, I couldn't go to Golden Apple, unfortunately. I was on the you know, different side of town. Now I live much further away from them at the new place. So it's going to be really hard trekking it over there, uh, you know, as often as I can. Right now I'm going there like maybe once or twice a month. And I think it's going to go down to once a month, which is going to really break my heart. Um, but I still will always support that store. I love that store. But I also pop in other stores. So today I popped into Legacy Comics to pick this one up in Glendale. And so what I'll do is I'll give out the digital code as always. So boom, right there. First person to put that digital code in. Uh, go to that website, put the code in, and you will get a free digital copy of Venom First Host number five. And this is not the Mark Bagley cover. Mark Bagley did do a cover, but I figured this one would probably be sold out by the time I got to Golden Apple, because I don't know if they're holding the variants for me. Um, but this is by Javier Garon. You probably saw me post uh, this image on Instagram recently, and I unfortunately I forgot the artist's name when I posted it. Uh, so his name is Javier Garon, awesome artist, doing a lot of covers lately and comics for Marvel. Uh, and I think maybe some DC, I can't remember, but I know Marvel. Um, but this image is just amazing. I loved it. So when I saw it, I was like, they have one, they had one left at Legacy. So I picked it up. It was really cool. Um, so yeah, big shout out to that store and, you know, enjoy that digital code. If you pick up that code, I hope you enjoy the book. If you did, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Uh, but for now, we're going to go over this book and we are going to talk about spoilers uh, because I don't want to hold back on this one. This is the final issue and this is essentially the ending of, uh, of Mike's, you know, Mike Costa's full run on the book. And it has two artists on it, Mark Bagley of course, and Paco Diaz, who drew the intro here, the opening stuff. And as you know, in the last episode, Eddie was on the ship with Milans, and then they have, were surrounded by Kree warships, and you had Tel, uh, Tel Car, right, who was sitting there kind of being like, ha, my team's here, they're going to come rescue me, I have the bioweapon, you guys are screwed. And it uh, turns out that's not the case. Uh, the, the Kree are like, look, you were a warrior, you were, you know, listed as a uh, traitor to the cause. Um, you're here with the weapon. We do not deal with extreme weapons anymore. We do not want to wipe out entire races anymore. The Kree have, you know, we're war-bound people, but we're also trying to take a new leaf and we're trying to handle things a different way. And this weapon is very unstable. So now that we know you're on board with it and you have it, uh, we can wipe you out. And the witnesses that are there, we can wipe you all out in just like one fell swoop and we can just lose you guys to history, uh, a bad part of our history, uh, according to the Cree. And so Telcar's like, no, and he's like trying to hack in, you know, trying to get them to stop, trying to send them signals to stop. And then meanwhile, Eddie and Milan are just trying to get the heck out of Dodge. So she has to ditch her suit because it's torn. So the symbiote child bonds with her. And I kind of thought it was going to stay with her. I was really surprised to find out it didn't. But then you have the Kree here, and then they launch all their missiles, and they wipe it out. But luckily, a soul ship gets away, and that is Milan's ship. And she's uh, having this great banter with Eddie on their way back to Earth. And she's kind of like, I'm looking forward to dropping you off. Because Eddie's like, oh, that, that wasn't satisfying at all. Like, And I felt like that was a little rushed, the way they ended that whole thing. It was very, very rushed, in my opinion. Uh, but it does lead to a good second half of the issue, I feel. And so Eddie is kind of like, uh, you know what? I just want to sit there and eat his brains. That would have been justice for me. And she's like, you know what? I can't wait to drop you off at home. And Eddie's like, okay, fine, <laughs> whatever. And he's like, yeah, drop me off at home. So he drops something. He gets dropped off. He has the child with him. And, uh, you know, he goes off to, uh, you know, to, I guess, you know, go back home, go do his regular routine. But you see here a hand of someone who, uh, I guess, stowed away on the ship. And so when Eddie gets home, uh, he first wants to go talk to Liz Allen. He wants to tell her and Alchemex to shovel it. Um, and uh, he's like, you know, jog on, get out of here. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Uh, you guys, you know, you put the, the child was not safe in your care. I'm going to go find another place to hold the child. And then while he's there, he runs into, into Harry Osborn. And this was really neat because these are two Spider-Man villains who hated Spider-Man for different reasons and they never really interacted too often and too much and so Harry you know, full on tells Eddie you know what I think of you I think you're a high school jock and you come in here and you're just a punk and you're trying to like you know argue your way into seeing my wife so you can tell her to you know eat crap and he's like and uh, you're just you're just you know really bland and boring and I don't like you and I've never liked you you know the few times I've met you and uh, Eddie's kind of like you know what dude can I buy you a beer <laughs> and I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't expecting that. And so there's this great heart-to-heart -heart for a couple pages of Eddie and Harry. 
And Harry, as we know in the comics, with Liz, has a child, young Normie. And obviously, recently, Eddie Brock helped save them during the whole Red Goblin story. So, like, Harry's like, look, I appreciate what you did for me and my family, but, you know, you need to get out of here. We're, we don't want anything to do with you anymore. And Eddie's like, I don't want anything to do with you guys either. So let me just buy you a beer and let's talk. He's like, because I want to ask you about what it's like being a father, because now I'm responsible for this alien child. And, uh, you know, I know so things are going to be different, but can you tell me what changed in your life? We both hated Spider-Man at one point, and now we're kind of over it, and we have, you know, different different goals now uh, but now it seems like we're both fathers and I could really use some advice and I really thought that was a great use for Harry Osborn uh, especially a kid who grew up with a bad father the kind of advice he gives to Eddie seems like it could help um, and it's uh, it's it's pretty great I really like that scene actually but when Eddie gets back home unfortunately the child is being threatened by Tel Carr, who was the one who stood away on the ship. He didn't blow up after all. So I was like, oh, good. It's not, you know, that story is not going to wrap up too easily uh, because I thought that was really rushed at the beginning. So you get a little bit more here. And of course, Tel Carr is like, look, I don't want your symbiote. Don't bring it back to me because it's it's going to betray me. It's going to turn on me like it did when we were on the ship. And he's like, so, uh, you know, I'm going to take this child or I'm just going to kill it. And so what Tel Carr did is he kind of reworked the uh, virus, the bioweapon. He managed to save one sample of it from the ship before it blew up. And when he jumped onto Milan's ship and uh, he says you know I retooled this to kill humans it was tied into scroll DNA and so now like I turned it into human DNA I took some of Eddie's DNA when they fought on the ship and Eddie bled and he's like I put some of your DNA in this so if I drop this now it'll go airborne and over a certain amount of time the world will die and I know the suit will probably protect you so you're gonna have to watch your world die the way I had to when I was on the ship and the crease turned against me and shot me he's like my whole life you know like is gone now he's like so I have nothing so I'm gonna make sure you have nothing too and uh, and then as he throws the bottle down this child reaches out grabs the bottle saves it Eddie and him fight, the symbiote jumps off him, but then Telkar attacks it, so then Eddie full-on fights it by himself. And that's what I'm saying. These are Eddie Brock moments. I mean, both characters make a decision. I'm going to go save the child. I'm going to save the, you know, the, and then even the child's like, I'm going to stop the virus from going out. And then Eddie's like, all right, well, I'm going to fight the bad guy who's now kind of powerful. He's still Cree, but he's at least a little, you know, less powerful now. And so Eddie tackles them, and they fly out the window, and they just start fighting in the street. And Eddie's like, you know what, dude? I'm a New Yorker. They're like, I ain't going to give up. I'm going to fight you. You know, kind of had one of those lines. And then uh, Tell Car gets hit by a taxi and uh, kind of knocked the wind out of him. Eddie hits him with a trash can and they just get in this big fight. And Eddie beats the living crap out of him until right at the end when Tell Car seemingly gets the upper hand, he beats Eddie up. And Eddie's like, you know, can't fight back anymore. And then boom, the child lands right on Tell Car's head. And what it does is it goes right into his eyes and it lobotomizes him. And it's like, you know what? I'm not gonna let you take over the way you took over my my parent, my, you know, Venom. Um, I'm not gonna give you the chance. And I know you know how to tap into our DNA and stuff, but I'm different, I'm a different breed. I was born in a different atmosphere and all this other stuff. So you're not gonna be able to tap into me as easily as you did my parent. And I only need a few seconds to dive into your eyeballs and lobotomize you. And now the suit is literally attached to a, like a, a shell, like just a, a coma patient, essentially. And it's insane. And so Eddie's like, no, this is not what we wanted for you. Like, we wanted you to have a better life. We wanted you to be different than Carnage and all those other things. And he says, you know, this body, it has a lot of knowledge. It knew how to manipulate our species. It did things that to our race that, you know, to Venom Suit, that it's, you know, our, that as far as I know, it's never been done before. Um, and it has answers to things. And it's been around the universe. I think I can learn a lot from this. He goes, so I'm going to keep it and uh, and I'm gonna like, be you know piloting this thing, and I'm gonna learn from it. And when I need more help, I'll come back and find you guys. He goes, but uh, you know, say goodbye to my my other parent for me. Uh, so Eddie is basically you know Eddie and Venom are the parents of this child. And so it's like, look, I'm gonna go now, and it disappears. And uh, I was like, wow, you know, I, I guess that was a good way to get rid of it without killing it, putting it out there in the universe. If somebody else wants to tell the story one day, they can. If Mike Costa wants to do it, I like when writers do this. I don't like little bows wrapped at the end of each uh, storyline because what you gotta you know keep in mind when you're your comic book writer is that other people are going to come in and write after you so if you just come in and definitively you know say everything and do everything uh, and leave nothing for anyone else to build on then uh, that those aren't really the type of writers I typically like uh, so I like this from Mike Acosta, from Mike Costa that he just kind of leaves this open for other people or even himself one day to come back and tell the story or something that Donny Cates can do even after his big crossover event, uh, event that he's going to do next summer so I thought that was a good way to end that story and then here at the end you have this nice tender moment with Eddie and the symbiote saying like you know the symbiote's like hey where's the child and Eddie's like no he's coming home and the symbiote's like finally getting back up from its you know its electric attack that it got and it rebonds with Eddie and he's like don't worry it's free it's going to go out there uh it you know we protected it we did the best we could and now it's just me and you you know forever 
and then you see the white spider on his back. So yeah, it was a really good issue. I thought Mike Costa did great. Mark Bailey's artwork and Paco Diaz did a great job. I love that variant cover. Um, so I, overall, I really like the series. I, you know, I, it had some ups and downs. I really liked the first issue and I kind of liked the second issue. The third one kind of lost me a little bit. Fourth one started to win me back, but it was great to see a pretty decent ending actually. Um, and also I could see where Mike Costa, he tweeted out like a week or two ago that he was like, you know, this script, I worked really hard on it, and I hope people like it. And I, I could see he put in some real effort. I feel like some of the things got wrapped up a little too neatly, or, you know, Milan's, like, I would like to see more, you know, closure there, maybe, um, or something. But I think he, with the page count he had, I think he did what he could. And overall, I really like the book. Um, but some of you guys may feel different, or you may feel the same. So if so, let me know down below, and we can continue the conversation down there. But it's going to be really sad. So Mike Costa, Mark Bagley, you guys made a great team. I hope you come back in the near future with another Venom story, even if it's another miniseries adjacent to what Donny Keats is doing. I would really love that. And, uh, you know, and I know the, the supporting cast and Dr. Steve and Alchemix are kind of gone now because Eddie pushed them away. But it was, uh, I would like to see more stories uh, with you guys, you know, telling, you know, stories of Eddie Brock uh, in this universe. What happens after Alchemix? Does he go back to them in any way? Does he try to rekindle with them? Does he become friends with Harry? Like, is there anything that, you, you know, you might be able to add one day? That would be awesome. Does a child come back? Uh, it would be cool. It would be cool to see some of that, um, you know, eventually. So, uh, yeah, if you're out there, Mike Costa, thank you. I think you did a really good job. I was a little iffy on your run at first, but you won me over by the end, especially with the two-part nativity uh, storyline, which I still feel is your best two issues. But this run, I thought, was really fun and really exciting, and uh, I dug it. So I hope you guys enjoy these videos that I made on this series. And if you did, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.